Steve. This is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. What's your daily devotion for October the 7th? Okay. Man, I can't believe that. Hey, <laughs> today, no, I'm not mad about that. Hey, today we're going to be in Genesis chapter 26, and we're looking at a great verse, okay? okay? We're going to be in Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. It's a windy day today. I hope the mic's not picking it up. Hey, it says this, Isaac, okay, who's Isaac? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's one of the three patriarchs. It says this, Isaac planted crops in the land that same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. And you're like, whoa. What's this story about? Oh, this is a great story, okay? Friends, there was likened unto a famine, okay? Nothing, and I mean nothing was growing. But God spoke a word into Isaac, go plant. What's that for you and I? Doing whatever he says for us to do, okay? It doesn't matter what the circumstances are dictating, okay? Whatever God says, and it doesn't make sense during this time. There is a famine, there is a drought, there's no water, okay? It reminds me of Angus Buchan, okay, over in Africa. The story of him, look it up, and it's a great movie as well. Guys, okay, God tells him, go plant. You know what that is? That's an act of faith. Really, God? Because here's the thing, if we question God, we got problems already, okay? Because God's never going to respond to doubt, okay, and disbelief. God speaks to him and tells him, go plant. Now, here's the thing, watch this. If God was to say that to you, and you watch this, let's say in your garage, you got a lot of seed. I mean, you got a lot of seed, and you can either, either use it now, or you can use it when it starts to rain, when the, when the good season comes. God says, okay, hey, Isaac, go plant. Does he take half of it and plant it? No. Does he take just a bag and plant it? You know, well, Lord, you know, it's not, it's going to die in the ground. There's, there's no water, Lord. He doesn't question God. He takes everything that's in his little garage and he goes and plants it. Now, because he acted in faith, what does God do? A hundredfold increase, okay? Where there was no way this could possibly happen because the ground is like getting under this. There's no water, but it doesn't matter. When God says something, when God decrees something, when God speaks from heaven, it's going to happen, okay? But what also happened in the story, okay? The Philistines, they're like, nothing around us is growing. Nothing. But we see Isaac over here with acres upon acres upon acres, okay, of what? Of, uh, of a hardy bumper crop, okay? I mean, good grief, are you kidding? When God starts to do something in your life, the naysayers, the negative people, the people who don't believe, okay, who are not followers of Christ, who are just professors, they're always going to complain. They're always going to have an issue with you. I've seen it a thousand times in my personal life and with other people I know. It's, it's terrible that when you're successful because you're listening to God and obeying God and following the ways of God, that those people on the outside, okay, of the camp, and that's a whole other devotion there, okay, and there's a meaning that those who are outside the wall of the camp will always take issue with you personally and what, what you're doing, okay? I'm happy for everyone that's successful because I realize this, they could never be successful unless God was in it. Are you with me? And if God's not in it and they cheated and they schemed and they were deceitful, okay, he takes it away. Scripture tells us that Isaac, okay, he got a hundredfold. What if you were promised this? And this is just an example. Look at this is just an example. What if you were told by God, an angel came to you and said, whatever you put in the offering plate this Sunday, I will multiply it within a season a hundredfold back to you. And you believe the angel. You know, it's like Gabriel. You know what I'm saying? And Gabriel's been in the presence of God. So you can see the glory of God on Gabriel. And, and you, you can't hold your pee. You're so scared. Your, your knees are shaking. You're like, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. What would you do? I mean, if you truly believe what the angel was saying and that angel was from God, what would you do? Would you take the money out of all your accounts? Would you sell everything you had? I mean, it's a hundredfold. If I give a buck, it's a hundred bucks. If I give a thousand, it's a hundred thousand. What would you do if you believed it? You would sell everything you had. I mean, wouldn't you? I know I would. Why? Because we're greedy. <laughs> That's a whole other devotion. Hey, I don't want to talk about that today. You know, like, let's not talk about greediness, okay? You would. God spoke this to him. He got a hundredfold. He didn't have to plan everything. 
He did it by faith. Friends, God's asking you to do things by faith. And now, no, that is just an example. It doesn't work like that. Because God blesses us in ways other than financial. You could have all the money in the world and be sick as a dog, okay, and have cancer or some other disease, okay? Here's the thing. Are you going to enjoy that? No, you're not going to enjoy that. So there's blessings upon measure that God blesses us with. And so many of them, we're not giving Him His due glory, honor, and thanks, okay? We need to. Every day we're experiencing miracles, okay? But we're not acknowledging them because we're not seeing them. You're going through the intersection, okay? And here's the thing. God delayed you, but you didn't realize He delayed you, okay, by that person that's pulling in in front of you, okay? And He stopped you from getting in a crash. Every single day, we're experiencing the favor and blessings of God and His provision and protection. But again, we're not seeing it like, okay, how He sees it. But I'm glad He's there. When I read the story in its entirety, and we're not going there, okay? The Philistines and people around Isaac they were jealous. I mean, they were literally jealous of his success. And here's the thing. Instead of being jealous, you know what I oftentimes do? I start to think, why is that person more blessed than me? Because God says, I'm no respecter of persons. Why, why is that? And oftentimes, I'll start to ask the right questions. And, and I'll look, I'll look, I don't look at him. I'm, I'm happy for him. But I'm looking inwardly. Am I where I need to be with God? And I always ask myself this question, can God bless me with everything that's in my mind, in my heart, my desires, my wants? Are, are they the things that He's placed within me? Is there anything that's going to hinder God in my life from doing the thing that He's doing in that person's life? Oftentimes I think we look at people and we start admiring them. You know, it's saying that keeping up with the Joneses, you know, uh, several months back I did one like that. No, what we need to do is make sure that we're in right relationship with God to hear the voice of God to tell us to go plant. See, if we weren't in right relationship with God and God says this, Hey, Joe! Yeah, Lord! Hey, I want you to plant a bumper crop! Here's what I say. Lord, we're in the middle of a famine. There's no water. It's not going to work. Are you there? Hey! Hey! Hey, you there? What you, what? you know it's a famine! There's no water! I guess the answer is no. He, he, God's not going to change his mind. The answer was yes. But because you weren't in right relationship with God, you couldn't accept it by faith. You couldn't grab the seed. You couldn't plant it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're never going to accept that which is spiritual when you're living carnally. Are you with me? So when God does speak a word, you can't, it's not rhema to you. You're going to argue with God. You're going to try to rationalize it. God responds to faith and trust. Okay, once he said it once, that's all you needed to know. He's not going to trick you. He's not going to run you into the ditch. He's not going to run you into a wall. If you're living in the flesh, if you're living carnally, if you incorporate the world into your life and you continue to do that day in and day out, but you're claiming the heritage of a child of the living God, when he does speak, you can't receive it by faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's God's Word in you. But oftentimes when I'm living in the flesh and carnally and of the world, I don't want to hear the Word of God. I don't want to hear the preacher because it steps on my toes, okay? It gets in my way, and it's keeping me from enjoying all this sin over here, which is short-lived. Sin is death, and it's going to manifest itself one way or another over seasons, over time in my life. I don't want that, but I don't know I want, don't want that because I'm blinded in the sin. I'm like this. I'm like this, so when God speaks, here's what happens. I'm arguing with God. Hey, God! There's no water! The ground! It's dirt! Look! It's dirty! What do you say? Guess it means no. It means you don't have faith. You're in sin. Isaac heard the word. Isaac took everything that was in the barns. Everything. Uh, he didn't wait for the rain, baby. He knew the God of the rain. He, he, he knew the God that created the rain. A bumper crop of a hundredfold. All those people are jealous. People will always be jealous when God is working in your life because He's not working in their lives. But it's their own choice. It's your own choice today too, folks. Do you understand that? It's your choice. How much of God you allow. God isn't saying you can have part of me. Hey, hey, hey Joe, you can have 50% of me. Hey, hey, Joe, I tell you what, 25%, I'm a, God's saying, I gave myself to you, all of me. 
You can have all of me that you want, 24-7, 365 days a year. Just take me up on it. Let me be your God. Let me be your friend. Let me counsel you. I gave my blood for you. I washed away your sins. But you're still splitting the fence with divided loyalties. Jump off the fence. Get in the winner's circle. When he speaks from heaven, you'll hear him. And you'll start getting that shovel and you'll start planting where it doesn't make any sense. And you're going to have a bumper crop. You got me? You're going to have a huge harvest, okay? You planted that which God has spoken into your life. And that's what I'm asking you to do today. I want you to plant that which God has spoken into your life. And it's going to be different for all of us, okay? Plant that in the way that God has told you to plant it. And it will never make sense. You know what I'm saying? And the jealous people and the naysayers will say you're stupid and crazy. Listen, I wish I had a quarter for every time someone thought I was stupid and crazy when I listened to God. Guess what? I have $25 million, okay? Please give me a break. And every time God showed them wrong. All right, calm down, Matt, calm down. Guys, I want you to get around the people who will celebrate your victories, okay? And again, in this story, they're jealous of them. No, get around like-minded people who are grounded in Christ, who are going the same direction as you. Some, some of them are on the broad path. I'm, you're not to judge them. You're to pray for them, but you're, you're on the narrow path. You're going a different direction with your life. You want people around you who will encourage you, who will celebrate your successes, your victories, okay, who will pat you on the back and who are legitimately happy that God has done something in your life life. They're not jealous of you. I love when people succeed. Absolutely love it. When people get healed, when people get miracles, when people finally ask Christ in their heart for the first time, or when a person that's in the man cave finally gets to the place where they rededicate their life to the Lord because their life has not worked thus far. You know it and I know it. How do I know it? Because I've been there and had to, what? Get on my knees before God, claiming something that wasn't mine, and then rededicating my life fully. What's that word mean in the Greek? Okay, in the original language, it means all, fully. Give all of yourself to Him, okay? Get around the right people, okay, who are going the same direction. You will not believe what happens in your life and how your life will have now new found meaning and you will feel whole. You won't feel empty once you give all. Okay? You won't feel empty anymore. You would think if I give everything, I'm going to feel empty. It's just the opposite. God fills the void in your life and he gives you directions how to plant the bumper crop. Hey, this is Matt Baby from the Man Cave.